Welcome back to Nursing 608 Diagnostic Reasoning. This is Module 4. This is probably my favorite part of the course where we start using our diagnostic reasoning to apply to case studies and start with the differential diagnosis diagnosis process. So our first case study is going to be a patient who complains of being tired and has a chief complaint of fatigue. Before we get into the case study, we're going to look at the objectives for this module. The objectives for this module are going to be describing diagnostics used for ruling out physiologic causes of fatigue, we'll look at describing diagnostics for screening mental health disorders and also screening for specific psychologic disorders. We will also look at the HEADS assessment for adolescents and we'll look at the CAGE assessment. We will also look specifically at depression screening and we will also apply diagnostic rationale for specific testing related to physiologic causes for fatigue. So before we look at the case studies, I want to make sure that we understand the goal of why we're looking at differential diagnosis and why each person will look at a different differential diagnosis, even if you have a specific one that you think that that is the diagnosis. So I know we looked at the strategy of three in previous modules. This, the whole idea of discussion board is to represent a grand round type situation. So the goal for discussion board is to encourage learning and integration of the diagnostic reasoning process, collaboration, and to bring evidence into practice, which is what the nursing profession is about and what professional practice is about. So when you're doing your discussion boards, think about that when you're posting and when you're collaborating with your peers. So let's talk a little bit about our chief complaint before we get into diagnosis. Let's look specifically at the tired fatigue chief complaint and what that means because that's a very fatigue or a very um, non-specific complaint but it's also a very common complaint patients come in and they just say I'm tired all the time so first as a provider or a practitioner it's up to us to determine what does that mean first of all are they fatigued as in sleepy, I'm tired, or are they fatigued as in my muscles are weak? Those are two very different complaints. So when a patient says I'm tired or I'm weak, we have to determine those, first of all, between those two complaints. The second thing is those are both complaints that can have physiological and psychological backgrounds or causes, and so we have to look at the um, history of that to see where, where this complaint is coming from. Keep in mind also that only 20 to 30 percent of the, the common complaint of fatigue has a physical cause, which can be very surprising. 50 percent of the fatigue complaint has a psychological cause with often a very, uh, feature of depression. So, and sometimes it can be also a combination of two. So we have to do a really good job of our, that comprehensive history and exam that we talked about at the beginning of this course. Also keep in mind that chronic fatigue syndrome is actually more common in teenagers and young adults, which I think is very, um, surprising to early practitioners and depression is more common in women age 30 and over. Tiredness with weight loss should be taken very seriously and always investigated with malignancy, diabetes, and hyperthyroidism. So um, always kind of keep those diagnoses in mind when you have a patient who comes in with those complaints. Also, fatigue with bleeding, shortness of breath is a red flag um, and should be considered 
um, for anemia, GI bleed, heart failure, and cardiac arrhythmias and COPD. In this course, every time we discuss a common complaint or a differential diagnosis, we will go over what we call red flags and anything that may be considered a urgent consideration or something that may need a referral and those will be highlighted in this course um, in the PowerPoints with red and they will always be what we call red flags or urgent conditions. So we will discuss that in every single module and you'll be able to easily identify those just so that you know what those are. So when we're looking at fatigue versus weakness, some key things that we can look at to determine is it a physiological or a psychological condition, we want to bring that out in the HPI by some important questions that we ask by life, about their lifestyle, their sleep cycle, their last menstrual period, obviously if this is a woman, or also their sex patterns, medications, any new medications that may be causing this, alcohol or drugs, change in appetite, change in thirst, joint tenderness pain, change in urination or bowel pattern, other symptoms related to um, that brought on the fatigue or weakness, stressors, change in jobs, change in location, um, life changes, death of a family member, those kinds of things, anxiety or depression, job um, express, exposure um, to any chemicals or those types of things, and recent travel. And these are all things that are also identified in your book. Second, we want to evaluate if the symptoms suggest psychological or psychosocial etiology first, then rule out physiological medication causes. So we want to look at lab tests for consideration for CBC, ferritin, um, iron levels, B12, folate, and then also look at urine, could it be infection, inflammation, look at ESR, thyroid, fasting blood sugar, and then also just a basic metabolic panel um, to see if there's any electrolyte imbalances. So sometimes we'll see just the basic thyroid, iron levels, anemia. We want to rule those out first. Then if you don't see anything, then you can move on to, you know, the UA, the electrolyte, and then the inflammatory. Those are more if you see things in their HPI, um, but usually, basically, you're going to start with the CBC, iron, and um, the thyroid, and then the others are, you know, based on their HPI. Also, appropriate screening tests, just basically when you're asking questions, you can eliminate the cage screening, depression screening, those are always done just when you're asking questions. And then blood alcohol level, actually you're not going to do that unless those things led you to, you know, believe that you would need to do that and then on to maybe some liver enzymes. Other considerations, you may want to consider nutritional disorders, um, medication side effects, and other hormone imbalances. I have a whole list of differential diagnosis, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but as you can see, these are all in your book. The list is quite extensive for just a simple complaint of fatigue. For affective disorders, psychological, psychosocial complaints, very common fatigue, lack of energy, lack of sleep, can't concentrate, First, rule out psychological causes to complaints, determine the severity of the symptoms, and you also want to include a suicide risk for these patients. Evaluate using the BATHE model, um, and I've included that, we'll go through it, um, and that includes the suicide risk, depression, anxiety, bipolar. If there's anything positive in that BATHE model, in that suicide risk, that patient needs a referral. Um, these patients can present with very um, physiological pain. They can have chest pain, abdominal pain that's very real, dizziness, headache, sleep disorders, and 
but that can all be psychosocial, psycho and psychological, um, but they do need a referral. Um, so be aware of that, and that's a, re you know, a referral right away. So I've included the bathe model. I'm not going to go through every aspect of it here. You can read it, but do be familiar with it. Background, effect, trouble, handling, and empathy. This is usually on board, so I do include it here. And just be aware of it. Now, obviously, you're not going to go through, I think, you know, every question about exactly like it is here. But I think as you have a... A relationship with a patient then you ask these questions as you're taking the patient's history you know how are things going um, how you know what's going on in your life and how are you doing with that um, so it's about your relationship and how you formulate these questions so this is also um, the cage questionnaire probably most of you are familiar with this again I think that this is something that we don't ask these questions exactly like they're written usually, but we just kind of ask, you know, well, have you thought about decreasing? How much do you drink? Those kinds of things. And again, this is based on your relationship with the patient. This is also a question that is usually on boards, is the CAGE questionnaire. So I also include that in this module as well. Prochaska's strange stages of change. I also include this here. I would, because I think it fits very good with substance abuse here when you're talking to patients about alcohol or it could be drug use and if they have thought about making any changes and the health behavioral change model, where are they with changes? Either they're ready, they've made some steps, or they've changed and then they're back to drinking you know, a six pack a night or, or whatever this could be. And it can be related to smoking or drinking or drugs or even diabetes and, you know, their A1C was seven and now it's 12. Um, but I can absolutely guarantee you that this will be on boards and it always is. So I include it here, pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. And now maintenance has also included relapse, just re realizing that, patients are human and that we're constantly in a pattern of change. So I do want to include our patient this week is not a adolescence, but the adolescent heads assessment is also often a board's question and it has been adjusted and I have included a um, information for you in video form in the module this week for how when you're discussing with patients that are you know young adults how your how their home life is education activities and then it used to just be drinking and safety and they've now included sex and suicide and how now you can incorporate social media into the HEADS assessment so it has been updated and I would look for um, if there is a question on boards related to the HEADS assessment that it would be the updated version with social, social media so I have included that as well on your module for the week. So let's talk a little bit about anemia. When there is a um, physiological cause to um, fatigue or tiredness, often one of the most common things that we'll see is that it's due to anemia. And there are multiple causes of anemia, and I, I'm sure that you are all familiar with that, and I don't need to um, go over all of that with you, but I am going to just kind of, I've included this slide to include some of those so that you can see. This is, I love this slide. It has many of the symptoms that the patients have as far as fatigue and um, I think weakness, uh, shortness of breath, that's usually what people will come in with complaining, sometimes palpitations or dizziness, but I just love this slide and includes all of those symptoms quite well in a nice visual. 
this is another slide, and usually there's a board question related to types of anemia, just to review, again, those for you. So when you get your lab work back, usually a CBC is the first lab that you'll do, and then the microcytic, normalcytic, and macrocytic, so that you can review those. Remember, microcytic, usually I've highlighted the most common anemias that you will see. Usually microcytic is going to be your iron deficiency. Your normal cytic is if there's some type of acute blood loss. And then macrocytic, your B12 and your folate deficiency. So again, back to if you're seeing a patient and they're possibly an alcoholic patient, then you can look at maybe liver disease and you may want to do liver enzymes or also sometimes we see these in some of our drug-induced anemia patients and I've listed some of those most common drug-related um, macrocytic anemias that we see as well. This is just a quick review of your liver enzymes. Some of you, I'm sure, if you um, are in the ER or the ICU, you're probably quite familiar with your liver enzymes, but liver enzymes are also very commonly seen on um, boards, so I'd like to include that here. And you can, you know, remember, you know, the macrocytosis and chronic alcohol abuse, more than five drinks a day, you're going to see elevated AST, normal ALT, and the macrocytosis. So I included that here. And it can resolve if you um, have abstinence after about three months. Usually those will go down. But you can also see that um, in other conditions, and I've listed those there as well. And remember also ALT, you see increased in liver injury, infection, and drugs, um, like some drug reaction. So I have included that as well. And that can um, is usually, like I said, on board boards as well. I've included this um, just for your review. It's just another review of anemia if you need review of that. Another very common reason for especially women and fatigue is hypothyroidism. So I've included some of the symptoms when you're doing your HPI and you're talking to these patients if they have hair loss, dry skin, um, change in their menstrual cycle, constipation, then you may want to consider you know, hypothyroidism for your diagnosis, and then you're going to be looking at doing that TSH as an, as an initial screening. Many of them also already have a reflex, um, you know, T4 with that, but consider that as well. So I love this little picture slide. So if you're unfamiliar with doing thyroid testing and you need a review of hypothyroid, I've included that as well. And this is just a nice um, quick little algorithm here for you. And then um, I can guarantee you you're going to have a question on boards as well uh, about hypothyroid. So this is your first case study. So for the assigned reading, there's a question or um, the reading is about, you have two chapters out of your Dane's book, one on affective disorders and one on fatigue. Review the labs that we reviewed in the PowerPoint in your lab diagnostics book, and then read the case study. I've also provided you several additional references related to anemia, hypothyroid, um, the HEADS assessment, also all these other um, things that I think will likely be on boards. And these are just for your, um, for your knowledge and for your review, but I think they will also help you while you're developing your case study this week. So the assignment for this week um, is that you can post your chosen differential diagnosis, and I think I've given you a few ideas from the PowerPoint, and then, but you, as you saw from the differential diagnosis, that there was a whole page of differential diagnoses that you could develop. So. Just choose one of those, post it by eight. Once that diagnosis is not, you don't have to post it by eight. 
um, it opens at 8 and then the, once that one is chosen you have to choose a different one and then develop your table at least 15 um, total positives supports refutes um, so it can be eight on one side eight on the other um, there's no magical number I just want you to have a well-developed table and that's why the 15 was developed and then submit that in both the assignment area and discussion board by noon on Wednesday and then there's a discuss or a differential table rubric to kind of help guide you for that and then you'll respond to at least one of your peers by Friday at midnight and then another peer by Sunday at midnight and you're going to comment on their case study whatever it was that they developed like the case study example is urinary tract infection so you may have said well you did a UA like you chose to do a UA but why didn't you do a culture say something like that like or why did you choose not to do a culture um, or say they included the patient's temperature but they didn't include the fact that they had back pain or you know that kind of thing um, whatever or they said they had frequency but they didn't say they had pain with urination that kind of thing um, you're going to just make comments about their case study or I you know would have used that as a support you know that kind of thing um, so you're going to be col collaborating together on each other's chart so it's almost like your peer re you're peer reviewing their chart um, or their case study just like but because you aren't able to discuss it as a in a round situation and then there's a quiz it opens at Thursday at 5 because by Thursday at 5 you've had some time to review each other's case study and hopefully have answered everything that would be on the five-point quiz you've discussed already by the time you actually take the quiz that's the idea of why it doesn't open until later in the week if you have any questions I'm available you can um, use the ask your professor discussion board or you can email me directly or we can do an Adobe or collaborate session if you guys are having trouble with this first case study um, you guys can let me know um, but please let me know early in the week so that we can have it before people need to post their case study and that is the table that you will use to both post in the discussion board and the assignment so that you can easily outline each area so you will put the differential diagnosis you chose and then the supports and the refutes in each one of those areas you will use both subjective data and objective data data from the HPI and then what diagnostic testing you would choose to do as the provider and why what rationale just like from the guidelines you have to provide rationale for the urinary tract infection I would do a UA and a culture because the patient presents with you know urinary frequency dysuria has fever blah 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 um, so I'm providing rationale for what I'm you know what I'm ordering and then the final synopsis now for you I want you to use the rule of three and give me at least three differentials of what it could possibly be but then what you finally chose as your one you're not going to have to develop all three of those but you know at least give me three that you thought about and what your final one was and then your reference that is where you're required to give that evidence-based research for based on say you know um, if you used hypothyroid I've already given you the endocrine um, society you would use the endocrine you know um, let's see I think I gave you we'll go back to clinical endocrinist and the American Thyroid Association endocrine ology practice um, so that would be a primary resource so it's not difficult but you just need to give a primary research so again I hope you have enjoyed this first module where we do a case study and hopefully it won't be 
too difficult. Just so you know that these case studies are designed to correlate with your health assessment class so that you are doing the same thing in health assessment. You should do the physical exam portion in your health assessment and then these are designed to kind of correlate with that. So I didn't choose like the order that we would do but so that you would now have already covered this material in your health assessment course. So although I'm not teaching the physical assessment part, it's expected that it will be included in your differential table. So make sure you include that part in your table. So if you have any questions, again, just let me know. Thank you. Hope you're having a great week and enjoy your first case study.